Absolutely. Let's get to the latest on those sanctions, Matt, with Bloomberg Washington correspondent Anne Marie Horton, who has been tracking these developments. Anne Marie, what more can you tell us about these new sanctions that we are expecting heading into tomorrow? Well, the United States is working in lockstep with the European Union and the G7, so they are coalescing around tomorrow and releasing the sanctions, even though we got a little bit of a window of what the EU prepares to do. And what they're going to go after is the, kind of the similar path they've taken already. So the roadmap will be financial, tightening some of the financial institutional uh, sanctions, as well as state-owned companies and also individuals. And we did hear the European Union may look to sanction President Putin's daughters, Katerina and Maria, not a a lot is known about them. Putin has gone to great lengths over the years to really protect their privacy, but potentially that would be largely symbolic, but they, uh, the EU could potentially go after them, maybe even the United States. We'll have to wait and see for tomorrow. Yeah. But what we do know is that it's going to be a lot of the increased pressures and what we've already seen. Yeah, it seems like a lot of these um, sanctions are really just symbolic. I heard this morning that the EU is going to stop buying coal from Russia as if they need it. Germany's already overflowing with coal. What they really need to do, everyone we talk to says, is stop buying oil and stop buying gas from Vladimir Putin. Sending him, I think BN had a story on Friday, $320 billion a year now, more mm -hmm. than he's ever taken in in revenue for those two assets to essentially finance the war in Ukraine. Well, that's correct, Matt. This year, Russia, if this all continues, selling commodities, $321 billion is actually up a third of what they sold last year. So this is the lifeblood of the Russian economy. This is how Putin, as you say, will be able to continue funding this war, especially given the fact that the United States has really tightened the screw screws and cut off his access to a lot of those reserves he's built up over the years. But when it comes to coal, we should note two things. One, they still do export Russia a lot of coal into Europe, about 40 percent or so into OECD countries. That is still a lot. And and the second thing is that I think, as Javier Blas said, our opinion columnist, this kind of starts to break the energy taboo. Energy was always going to be difficult for Western nations to invoke sanctions on Russia because they are so reliant. But to your, to your point, Matt, the second thing I would note is you're 100 percent correct. Russian oil and gas is so critical. But Europe is just not there yet, Germany namely for one.